It's mm, that's drunk. Want to know what it's like to play Mohawk in Headphone Jack? Okay, here we go. So this appears to be a side-scrolling platform. Whoa, oh my god. What the hell is going on? Oh crap, I'm gonna be sick. I'm gonna be really sick. Look, I get it. There's a gazillion platformers out there. There's only so much you can do to stand out before resorting to tactics like having the background rotating around as your character runs around in circles. But I mean, how on earth can anyone play this for even a few minutes without getting nauseous? I think this is one of those cases where even the dev team and whoever tested this were so desensitized to the spinning that they completely forgot the kind of effect that it would have on the gaming public. And it's kind of a shame too because this is a perfectly good platformer all things considered. It's not anything that's going to approach even stuff like Skyblazer or Arty Lightfoot or even Cool Spot, but it'd still be at least decent. You play as Mohawk, who in a stunning coincidence has a Mohawk, and also happens to be a distant relative of Dr. Manhattan based on their appearance, and the goal of each of the 14 levels is to collect enough CDs to unlock the exit leading to the next level, and these discs are everywhere, so you have to traverse as much ground as possible. If you want to give this game your own environmentally friendly story, you can pretend that Mohawk is picking up AOL free trial discs that have been discarded by the millions over the years. You destroy enemies by pressing down to go into the spiky form, I'm guessing it's supposed to be your mohawk protecting you? There's also oversized CDs you can find that unlock extra music, which is a nice touch. And of course there's power-ups as well, like the wheel, the spring, and the wings. The levels here are impressively huge, complete with hidden areas that are practically a requirement to find the further you get into the game in order to unlock the next level. The rate of speed that you can zip around at is pretty impressive too. I'm telling you, this could have been a pretty decent game had it been handled right. And that brings me to the L and R buttons, which allow you to rotate the level yourself to a certain extent. It's a nice idea, but it barely helps because it doesn't give you enough control. Personally, I think the game could have potentially worked if you could rotate everything yourself manually using the shoulder buttons and maybe have a balance between your forward movement conjoined with when you rotate. It would at least give the player more control and make this game a lot more palatable. Instead, the game plays you instead of the other way around, and that's the biggest disappointment here. This could have been a Sonic 2 type game utilizing precise twitch controls, but instead we got this mess. Mohawk and Headphone Jack isn't totally without merit though, the soundtrack is pretty good, and the sprite animation is well done, like when you die you just kinda fall apart, and some of the levels work in some interesting ideas like these pipes that zip you around, or these water sections, and like I said the levels are huge and force you to explore every pixel for any kind of hidden area, or in some cases even to find the exit when it appears, and there is a password system here as well. Hey maybe I'm the weird one for getting nauseous from all this spinning, maybe you're not affected by this kind of thing, and if you're not, you'll find Mohawk and Headphone Headphone Jack to be a decent playthrough, a totally different kind of 16-bit platformer. But I have a feeling that the crazy rotating is going to be a deal breaker for a lot of people. It's just way too disorienting, especially in a game that's predicated on exploring and finding items. It can be hard to tell when you've already reached an area, and when you're just going in circles. There are some good ideas in Mohawk and Headphone Jack, they're just not put together all that cohesively. I'd love to see someone try making a new game like this, but without all the motion sickness. So yeah, I'd pass on this one, unless you're immune to dizziness and vertigo.